Vblogs.com, we are in Stan, Switzerland with DJ Bobo. Now, for those who do not know, DJ Bobo, who is born as Rene Bauman, actually is a megastar. He has... <laughs> He's a megastar. He has 12 studio albums, over 35 hit singles, has notched up 14 million records and sales, countless music award nominations, including 10 World Music Awards. Sounds good. I don't know about that. that Sounds In a career spanning 23 years. Yeah. That is pretty amazing. Isn't yeah. It? Sounds good. Sounds good. Continue. You have more pride? No, no. Oh, the, 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 <laughs> there is a lot more. No, no, no. Actually, you know, in the career, you never care about prices unless you don't get them anymore. Ah, That's the moment you realize how nice it was. So when you get a golden record, mm -hmm. you say, thank you so much, I appreciate it, it was so great. Uh, and then when you don't get the golden record, it's like, shit, there must be something wrong. I have to change something. So I appreciate every, each and every golden record and, uh, and everything I, I, I did in the career. So, uh, But in the moment, in the first time, you don't realize what you have when you get an award. But um, World in Motion, 67 weeks in the Swiss charts. No, yeah, that's a long time. I, that, that is a long time. Mm -hmm. That is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Did that album take you by surprise? <clears throat> mm, that was the time uh, when we also went on tour with Michael Jackson on the, on the History World Tour. We were his special guest on, on this world tour. And that was the time when... Um, the album World in Motion was successful in, in many countries, even in, in Germany, I think it was more than 50 weeks, more than a year in the charts. So uh, okay. it was not a surprise because we realized at that time that the album was different than everything I did before. It was not made for the dance floor, it was made for a larger community. So we had radio plays a lot, so the tours went bigger, became bigger, and then the Michael Jackson thing came as well. So that was all in between one year. So it was not a surprise, it was just a constantly growing album that was growing every week. What do you say to people who call you a novelty act? Um, what is a novelty act? Well, a novelty act is, is a unique... Um, performer who can only minister to a very very small niche you know because your music is largely euro dance mm -hmm. and people feel that it isn't mm -hmm. mainstream but you've managed to achieve incredible sales mm -hmm. and popularity with this niche. stream of music yeah yeah that's maybe with the world in motion album we went out of the niche out of the clubs only into a larger audience we reached families as well. We reached kids, we reached the grandparents. They went with their kids to the concerts. And um, there's one thing I learned in that time. Never try to choose your audience. The audience is choosing you. So there are a lot of artists who are trying to be cool. Only for my friends. But of course I want to sell millions of records. Those two things don't get together. Try to make music for everyone or make music for your friends. But those things don't get together. So uh, I was really happy when, when I realized the kids on the streets like what I do. Even the grandparents like what I do. That, that was a very nice moment. And it's still, till today, it's like that. And what's also interesting about um, your career is that some of your highlights have happened in moments when almost impossible for any other person. So, for instance, Chihuahua, you were given a 10-day deadline, mm -hmm. we need a hit record. Mm -hmm. And in 10 days, you created a record that topped the charts in Austria, Switzerland, Germany, and France, and went platinum in so many European countries. That, uh, that was an accident. <laughs> Tell us about the accident. <laughs> it was a... <clears throat> that was a question from, from the record company in Spain. And they wanted to have Lou Bega 
Um, they wanted to have Lou Bega because it's a mumble song. They wanted to have a mumble for this TV commercial. But the record company said, yeah, Lou, Lou Bega is not with us anymore. But we signed just here with this guy from Switzerland. Maybe you ask him. So they said, yeah, okay, we ask him. So they said, can you do a mumble song in 10 days? We need in 10 days, we need a demo version. <clears throat> so I was holding the phone like this. To, I was in the studio. Mm -hmm. And I said to the guys, oh, guys. Spain's on the phone. They want to have a mumbo song. I never did a mumbo song. What should I say? And they said, yeah, give it a try. I said, okay. If there's something in 10 days, you will see it. If not, try the next. So then we, we started to do a mumbo song for the first time ever. And that was Chihuahua. And it was based on the TV commercial. There's a guy in the TV commercial who drinks um, a coke and then he says Chihuahua and I was like if there's something stupid like this you have to use it for the song you cannot let it go so I used the word and, and uh, we did the song Chihuahua it was really a, a hit by by an accident so you, you didn't imagine the success that all the way from Spain to Mexico to Austria to, it, no, no. it was gonna be a chart topping hit <laughs> even when I came back from the studio I met the rest of my crew on the way to a concert, and I played it to, to them and said, uh, uh, listen, I did something else, what do you think? And uh, they were like, oh, mm -hmm, special. And my wife was like, oh, that's cool, that's great, I love it. So your wife liked yeah. it. <laughs> she loved it, I was like, okay, at least one. <laughs> but I think it's a, it's a typical song that you, you cannot plan to be successful. It was a moment. You've always toyed with the idea of fantasy, so um, uh, projects like fantasy, vampires, I mean you even shot a video at Euro Disney, didn't you? Mm -hmm. What is this, how does fantasy sort of influence or minister your work? It came from the stage side of the music, because if you visualize music, um, fantasy worlds always help you to go somewhere else and uh, even circus yeah is, is a fantasy in a sense. you try to yeah you try to bring people uh, to another place for two hours so um, the fantasy thing and even the vampires thing was we wanted to <clears throat> to um, what's the word in English um, caricature conceptualize uh, no no it's like was um, this of English they don't know. Okay, it's like a parody. All oh, right, okay, okay. Vampires should be a parody of the bad vampires. But um, that, that wasn't so easy the way I thought it would be because I thought to, to do a parody on vampires is easy, but it's not. Because it's a very thin line. There, there are really people who believe in this. And that's the problem. <laughs> so... Uh, I thought it's good, but that makes it not, not easy. So, fantasy is always great for the stage. And uh, then we turn it around and we brought fantasy into the music. But like even Pirates of Dance, that yeah. was another fantasy moment where, yeah. you know, pirates then became sort of Eurodance, um, center stage. Yeah, the stage was the point there. We had the idea of building a stage that is not like this, that is like this. So there was a, it could be a rocket or a spaceship or a pirate ship. So the pirate ship is the most typical long thing you can use as a stage. So that's why we used the pirates theme. So where do you keep all the costumes? <laughs> There's a room behind. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, you can have a look. We're going to explore this in part two <laughs> of this interview where There's DJ Bobo is going to show us his awards, his gold disc, his platinum disc, his accolades and also his costumes. But that's in part two. <laughs> Vampires remains the fan favorites. I met you in Helsinki in 2007 and um, still at almost every Eurovision event it's played and people have their own dance routines to it on the dance floor. That's nice. Sadly, it's not online anymore. It's not? No, the video, oh, um, the really? um, not the music video, the live performance of Vampires Are Alive it's not. cannot be found online. 
don't know about. Oh, so clearly you don't know about. It. No, no, <laughs> no. Well, well, the fans want it back, so yeah. hopefully, please reintroduce it because it's like you yeah, know. it was it, it was always good. I liked it. It was a nice performance. I loved the staging and everything. It was good. I don't know why it disappeared. Maybe the ye ye EBU. EBU. No. no, no, never, no. never, never, never. Um, no. Okay, well, it's good. So we're gonna collectively hunt to get the video back yeah. online. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in vampires? No, of course not. I, uh, I believe in. Uh, what was the movie? The, the, or, or the musical, there's this famous musical um, uh, with the rice, when people throw rice. Oh, uh, the uh, Greek uh, wedding or something. No, no, no. Um, the. Kind of yeah. Uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes. Oh, yeah. The the Richard O'Brien's musical. That inspired me a lot, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's the way I believe in vampires because. For me, the stage vampires, they were a little bit crazy. They were searching the master, the one and only. And in every concert, we found the master. It was a person in the audience. And the guy, mostly it was a guy. We, we took a guy on stage and he had no bloody clue what we want from him. We said, master, please, show us your art. And he was like, what, well, what should I do? And in the beginning of the show, I did this jump from... Uh, from the movie, you know, where ba uh, where he holds Babe. What was that movie? Um, oh, again. Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing, thank you. All right. I did this jump uh, Patrick myself. Yeah, yeah, I did the jump. And then we said, show us your art. And then the band started to play now. Uh, <laughs> at the time. And in front of 10,000 people, every evening, the person who stood there was jumping on to, to one of my dancers. And he did this without knowing what he's doing or without any instruction before. So what I believe is that Vampires is a very funny theme to bring it on stage because you can play good and bad and crazy is very close together. So that's what I like on the Vampires theme. But I think a lot of people thought that we mean it for real. And that's the... I, I, I think people didn't know what to think. Yeah, um... they were like, what, what is he doing? So there were not enough time to explain that it was a parody. All right. So at the end, I, I still think people think he, he believes in vampires. He knows. Well, it was a very convincing yeah, performance. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, true. And also, um, and also that, that we had some problems with the church as well. Because, oh, Switzerland? Yeah, oh, heavy. Oh. Uh, he, he can tell you. Okay. <laughs> More on that later. And... Um, Moving into, because you are a very successful um, pop star and Eurovision is all about um, showcasing talent. What are your thoughts on Switzerland's performance over the years? Because um, Melania Rene, who performed for Switzerland this year, actually came dead last. Um, even though ahead of the contest, um, it was one of the entries that was looked upon quite favorably. What should Switzerland do to change its um, track record? <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, I think try to be original. Try to be... Um, to do something a bit out of the box. Don't try to have a nice song with a nice costume. If you're from Switzerland, you can do something that no one expects. And then at least you have a chance to be recognized in the rest of Europe because what we cannot offer is a big community of Swiss people in Europe who vote for us because Switzerland is simply too small. But you have the most neighbors so if Eurovision has been accused as being a contest of neighborly voting. No it's not. That's what people think. That's what people th I agree with not. you. It's I not. agree with you. No it, the, 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 the answer is very simple. If you are from Russia, for example, there are so many Russian people living in Belarus, living in the Ukraine, living uh, in, in the neighbor countries. And uh, one question, for example, in Germany, there's one country... Turkish. Yes. 
that there are three million Turkish in Germany. That's okay. They vote, a few of them vote, and that's enough. So Swiss people, they don't live outside of Switzerland. But don't forget that also Eurovision accounts for 50% music experts. Yeah. So if the music experts rank you down... That's what happened, right? Last year. I think Italy would have won. Yes. See? Yeah, 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 See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the good thing? I don't know. And this 50% thing came after we, the year after we were there. So... Which I has favoured Swiss acts because Anna Rossinelli yeah. would never have made the final. In, without the judges. Without the music See? experts. So I think, don't take Eurovision uh, as... Uh, if you go there as a Swiss artist, don't try to um, take it also too serious. Make it as good as possible and try to make something special. And then it, it, it could work or not. That will not affect um, your life at all if it's not working. In my case, I was, I was pretty lucky after um, going out it had no bad effect on the career. It was okay. Just in Switzerland for about two, three years, it was a little effect, but not a big. The Swiss pre-selection is the, one of the most unusual in Europe because generally pre-selections restrict talent within national borders. Mm -hmm. The Swiss pre-selection actually is almost like a global talent search where you could be a foreigner and come to Switzerland and um, represent Switzerland. What are your views on this? That's why I came to Eurovision. Because in the year 2006, I saw a group... Vanilla Ninja? No, no. Oh, yeah, but... 2005. No. Yeah, then. 2005, it was a group called... 6 for 1. 6 for 1. Ross yeah, Eagles group. Yeah, so it was six people from six different countries for Switzerland. And I was in front of the TV, and I was like... Why I why there's no feeling you know why uh, normally you go for your country or you're like oh no no that's nothing but it was worse it was like I don't care because they don't represent my country because they are not from my country uh, so I think that's when I call uh, I went to the guys here in the office and I said what do you think is does it make sense to go for Switzerland to Eurovision they were like no 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 don't go there. I said, okay, you're right. And then I was in a live TV show in Switzerland and they were asking me the same question. What do you think? Is it good that uh, foreign artists are representing the country? And there I made the big mistake and I said, if people wanted to have me there, I would go there. That was the thing. And then everyone said, yeah, then you go. Oh, no, that's not a big mistake. I just hope Celine Dion wasn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> because after giving Switzerland his victory, then to be told, you shouldn't have gone. <laughs> yeah, true. So, no, I think it's not a good thing. Uh, I think uh, Switzerland should send... It's not a question of where you're from, but at least people who are connected to the country. That's important because the viewers at home, they want to go with someone. And they can just go with someone if they know at least a little bit of the, the history of the person or the group or whatever. And there you have it. What is Eurovision without controversy? Eurovision News with Attitude. We've been chatting to DJ Bobo. This is part one of this interview. And in part two, we'll be exploring his career highlights, including his albums, his 35 hit singles, his World Music Awards, his beautiful face, his beautiful body, and hopefully the outfits, <laughs> the, the, the fashion, <laughs> the fashion and future projects. Absolutely. Stay tuned. Thank you.